Now let's learn more about the IP addresses. So IP address is a virtual address which is assigned to each and every device within the network. And for this we have two different versions. The first one is IPv4 and the second one is IPv6. If you talk about the difference between these two, the first difference is their size. IPv4 has a size of 32 binary bits. On the other hand, IPv6 has a size of 128 binary bits. If you talk about their consumption, how many devices they can accommodate. So for IPv4, it would be 2 raised to the power 32, which is 4.29 billion. And if you talk about IPv6, it would be 2 raised to the power 128, which is somewhere around 3.4 into 10 raised to the power 47. Now, if you talk about our current consumption of IP addresses, in current date, we consume total of 21 billion or you can say more than 21 billion IP addresses, which include everything, including your servers, mobile phones, your IoT devices, everything, right? Now the question comes, even if today's date we use IPv4, then how this 4.29 billion IP addresses are divided into 21 billion devices? It's correct that some in some organization, in some networks, we purely use IPv6. But on a vast majority of devices, on a vast majority of networks, even till date we use IPv4. So just to understand how we gonna use these devices for these many numbers, let's first understand the structure of IPv4. For that, let me just give you a simple example. As I told you, the size is 32 binary bits. So we are gonna divide these 32 binary bits into the pair of eight binary bits. So we are gonna say, this is the first pair of eight binary bits, then second, then third, and then the fourth one. These four pairs, each of them are known as octets. Here we have the first octet. Then we got the second one and then we got the third one. Just change the numbering. This is the fourth octet. This is the third octet and second octet. If we arrange them in a row, it will somewhat look like this one. Just copy this, paste and just to separate these octet, we use the dot symbol. So I'll add a little more space just to give us a little more hint here. So second octet, then again a full stop, then again the third octet and then the full stop. So this is how a general IP address looks like. And this is the structure that we how we usually represent it in this simple horizontal structure. Now the question comes, what is the maximum range possible for an octet? If we set each of these zeros to ones, if we replace each of these zeros with ones, the maximum number is two raised to the power eight because we have eight binary bits here. So the maximum number is 256. So because we always start with the zero in the binaries, so it would be 255.255.255.255. .255 this is the maximum range of an IP address. And the beginning part is zero, 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 and zero. This is the whole range of IP addresses we have. And this whole range is divided into five different classes. Now, let's learn about the different classes. One more thing, each class is identified on the basis of this first octet, right? Just keep this in mind. So we have five different classes. Let's talk about the first one. The first class is class A. And inside this class A, the range for the first octet is from one to 127 this is our first octet range it means the class a has a range of 1 to 127 if i give you a simple example let's say the ip address is 125.0.0.1 this is an ip address from the class a 
Now, if we take a simple example of the class B, the range of the class B is from 128 to 191. It means if the IP address starts from 128 or somewhere between this 128 and 191, it will belong to the class B. In the same way, we have the class C, D and E as well. For the class C, the range is from 192 up to 223. It means, give a simple example, let's take 199 or a common one, 192. Simple. If you talk about the class D and E, these classes are not in widely used because they are reserved for some research purpose and for the government organizations. So we gonna put them in a different section. Only these three classes are in use for the public. This class D and class E is not in use for the public. And the class D is from 224 to 239. Simple example is 229, let's say. And the class E is a little bit more than 240 to 255. A simple example would be 249. So these are the five different classes that are available in the IPv4 addresses. One more thing to note, IPv6 does not have these classes. These classes are only for the IPv4 addresses. In IPv6, we don't have these classes. Now, in IPv4, there is a specific range. If you talk about the class A, in the class A, we can go from 1 to, we can go from 1 to 127, right? But in actual, 127 is not used in class A. In actual, the range for this one is 1 to 126 because 127 is reserved for local loopback. 127 address will never be assigned to a machine. It is automatically assigned, automatically used for each and every loopback. If you want to send a packet to your own machine, or let's say from one application within your machine to another application within your machine. You can use your local loopback IP address. For all this purpose, this 127 range is already reserved there. Now, 